Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS. And in this exercise, I'm going to be talking about lids and obstructions. These are two features found in the geometric data editor. All right, so what I have on the screen here is my HECRAS with a couple river reaches sketched in here. And what we're going to talk about is the lids and obstructions. So if you click on cross section and then options, this is where you can add a lid to the cross section option and then just above that, obstructions. So the first part of this lesson will be about the lids and then the second part we'll talk about obstructions. The reason why this geometric data topic has um, come up so late in the lesson count is that it's classified here in the user's manual under advanced features for model line, modeling pressurized pipe flow. So I'm going to leave a link to this page right here in the description of the video if you're curious about uh, following along and learning about lids and modeling pressurized flow within HECRAS. All right, so here we are. We're back in HECRAS. I'm going to toggle on the cross-section data editor here. Now for this left reach, that this is the river I'm going to be talking about for lids and then have a separate river and reach sketched in over here to the right, which I'll use for obstructions. HECRAS can be used to model pressurized pipe flow during unsteady flow calculations by adding a lid to cover up an existing cross-section. So what that means here is I've got some model results already down in place, but we've already seen how to sketch out the geometry, uh, the cross section of a river reach that's done and that's done right here. And then if I wanted to add a lid or a cover to basically create some sort of pressurized pipe flow, if the, the flow rate and the water surface elevation gets up high enough, that's options, add a lid to cross section. And it's in this dialog box where I'll specify the station, the high elevation and the low elevation. This dialog box and then the resulting cross section, once we fill it in, may look something like an inline structure or a bridge. So these are some concepts that we um, are not totally unfamiliar with if you've already learned about those topics. This option only works with 1D finite difference solution schemes, and it also does not work with 1D volume solution schemes. And what I mean by that is if you go up to the run and then unsteady flow analysis, there's an option here for computation options and tolerances. And then when you open up this dialog box to the bottom, there's this 1D numerical solution. So what I said is that the lids will work if you keep on the default value here for finite difference. And the user manual says that it won't work if you use the finite volume method. So just go ahead and keep it on default. Let's go ahead and add a, a lid now. So I'm going to close this. And then here is our add lid to cross section editor. So what I'm going to do is look at the cross section, add a lid, and then it should update when I click OK. So let's just start at river station zero. The high water surface elevation, I'm just going to keep that at 211 because that's the existing top of bank slope, this elevation here. So we'll type in 211. And then for low elevation, keep in mind this is station zero. So it could be really anything. Let's just start it off at maybe like 208. So I'll say 208. And now let's come out to, I don't know, maybe like this river station 30. And then this is going to be 211 the whole time. Now let's go up to 209. So I'll go 60. I'll just kind of do a mirror image from now. So 211 and then 209. And then the final cross section here, the last station in the bottom part is 90, 211, and then down to 208. All right, let's go ahead and see what that information gives us. So I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, the lid has been added to our cross section. So I can click apply data. Now, this particular geometry, the water surface looks to be around 207, maybe a little bit less. It's not making contact with the lid. So there is no pressurized pipe flow at this particular moment in time. I'm going to go back up to that options. And then now we have a check mark right here next to a lid to the cross section. So that way the user knows that there has been a lid added without having to like look at it. But we can look at the data right here. You can clear the data by clicking the clear button and then clicking OK and then it's gone and then that would save it. I've gone ahead and already added a few lids. So if I scroll up to the next cross section, this is 200. This is the cross section here at River Station 400. So a little bit different. And then here's the one I added for 600 different again. And then finally, the one for River Station 800 is right here. I go back to 600. This is the more interesting one. And then I go to look at some results. Let's go view cross section. And then I run an animation from some flow data that I've already added. Here's the animation. If I, I click play, we can see the water su surface level increases. 
almost to the top. So this is not true pressurized flow yet, but it works sort of like a culvert or a gate that's not fully submerged. You may have noticed that there is a checkbox right here for add price, uh, Priceman slot. I think it's pronounced Priceman. The Priceman slot option will instruct the computational code to treat this cross section as a lid and as pressurized flow. It's only available for unsteady flow and if turned on, conveyance curves for the cross section will be truncated at the maximum low chord elevation of the lid. So in this case, the maximum low chord elevation of the lid here is 212, as you can see from the cross section data. Right here is that checkbox and we can actually control this checkbox from the tables. So I'm gonna click okay here and then close the cross section, now let me apply data, close the cross section data editor, go to tables and then towards the bottom, there's this Priceman slot and lidded cross sections. This is a table that shows all of the cross sections in the selected river and reach that have a lid. And then it also shows if there is a Priceman slot checkbox checked or not. So we can make that update here or in the individual cross-section data. More information is available about the Priceman slot and the math and the hydraulics all behind it in this page right here for pressurized pipe flow. I'll leave a link to this in the video description as well. It'll be the second, second link. And this is coming from the HECRAS hydraulic reference manual. All right, the second topic I wanna cover in this lesson is obstructions. So for obstructions, I'm going to be focusing on this second river reach here. Here, I'll just move it over so it's the only one in view. And what I'm going to do is click on the, sorry, the cross section again. Okay, it recentered me. I'm looking at this river reach right here. And then if I go to options and then obstructions, actually what I want to do is switch over to river B. Here we go. Options and then obstructions. Obstructions are areas where cross, a cross-section cannot convey flow based on a physical obstruction that's built in the floodplain, but that is not represented in the geometry data or the terrain data. So what you're seeing here is a user interface, a dialog box that looks similar to the ineffective flow area, actually. But what it is, this is for obstruction. So once we add some obstruction data in here, click OK, we're going to see the update in the plot. And then, of course, when we run a compute simulation, it's not going to convey flow in that area. I'm going to toggle down to River Station 1400 for this first example. Go Options, Obstructions. And then for the two options I have here at the radio at the top, there's Normal and then there's Multiple Blocks. So typically, more, Normal is for a simple obstruction just on the left or right side. And then Multiple Blocks is if you have a little bit more detailed information concerning the obstruction you can enter it using this multiple blocks option so uh, i'm going to go ahead and do an example of both for normal at here at river station 1400 i'm going to say there's an obstruction from the left over bank and that's going to be 25 and then the elevation will be 216. so what that means here is 216 will have an obstruction that comes over and then down at river station 25. So when I click OK, you can see how that obstruction is now added to the, the cross section. I can apply the data. So now that's saved. And let's do another example, but on the right over bank here. So options, here's obstructions. Notice the check mark has been added because there is an obstruction. I'll click obstructions. And then on the right side, I'm going to say station 50. So this is this is right down here. And it's coming in from the right at an elevation of 211. So 211 is like right about here, and then it'll come down to 50. Click OK, and then boom, there's that obstruction. So as you can imagine, we have limited obstruction editing capabilities using that normal option for options obstructions. What I'm going to do is scroll down to the next cross section and do a quick demo of the multiple obstructions and then multiple blocks. That's what it's called. So what I'm going to do is do a starting elevation of zero, ending elevation of 18. And then I'm just going to type in some numbers here. After 18, it's going to go down to 213 over to station 25. And then down in the middle of the main channel here, I'm going to go 40 to 45, the obstruction elevation comes up to 209 because somebody drove their car into the river. All right. So what that looks like is an obstruction of flow over here from the leftover bank and then a separate obstruction I've added down here in the main channel. So using that multiple blocks obviously allows you a lot more freedom to 
create an obstruction in your cross section. So this is the one we did at 1200. This is the one we did at 1400. You can get a view of all the obstructions in the single table. If you go up to your geometric data editor tables, and then right here, blocked obstructions, go ahead and click on that. All right, so here is the table. It shows our two obstructions, the river station, and then the left and right elevation data. This is cut off a little bit because I have a lot of information here. More information at River Station 1200. And the typical editing tools are shown up here at the top with adding a constant, multiply, set, value, and replace values. If I wanted to see all the cross sections in this selected river reach, I can click on the checkbox here. And this is a way to quickly and easily view and change the data for obstructions within a single river reach. All right, well, that was it for this lesson. We talked about lids and pressurized flow in our first part. And then after that, we talked about obstructions in HECRAS.